You don't have to be limited when you need to show and zoom into a section of a document on your iPad. And you can even do this via Zoom or other meeting apps. Welcome to Apps and Law. My name is Brett Burney. Today's app is iTrial, which is an innovative presentation app from Exhibit View Solutions LLC, which is a litigation support and trial presentation consulting company. First, I'm going to show you how the iTrial app works and some of the features and buttons and everything. And then I'll just briefly show you how you can take advantage of all of those features inside Zoom or another meeting app. Most of you already know how to use something like Microsoft PowerPoint or Apple's Keynote. And these apps, of course, work fantastic if you have an outline or a presentation where you know you're going to go to the next slide, next slide, next slide, next slide. But there may be some instances or scenarios where you simply have a list of files and documents and you may not know which document that you need to show or maybe you want to jump back and forth. And once you bring up a document, one of the things you might want to do is actually call attention to a certain section or do what we call a call out of that section, maybe highlight some text as well, or draw a circle or something on that document or that picture or that file. Don't get hung up on the trial part of iTrial. While yes, this app was designed for trials and of course it works very well in a formal hearing or a courtroom trial, it can be used anywhere where you're in a meeting with colleagues, for example, or clients, and you simply just want to walk through a document. And frankly, you want to control the attention of your audience. That's where iTrial can help. Now, the first step is to create a case. We'll just call this one test case. We add that and that creates a folder. So the next thing you want to do is add exhibits into that folder. You can tap the add button here, tap add exhibits. Now, iTrial uses the iOS document picker, which means that you can actually go out and pull files from Dropbox or any cloud based service that you've connected to in the files app. And in this case here, I'm just going to go find a folder. Then I want to select a few files here that I want to add into my case. Say so the test case and there they are. Now, once the files are imported, you can tap the edit button so that you can rename them if you need to, or frankly, you can move them around if you want to reorganize them. When you want to show a document, just tap on that document and it immediately pops right into the main viewer pane here. The exhibit list disappears so that you get the advantage of looking at it in the full screen. Now you can always pull back the list of exhibits by hitting that little arrow in the upper left corner and you can pull up another document or a file to view. Now by default, only a single document appears, but you have the option of actually showing two documents side by side. The first thing you want to do is tap the clear screen button up here in the upper right corner. And if you actually can see, there's a little divider down the middle of the screen. And what this does is it allows you to actually select which side to tell iTrial to show the document on. So if I tap on the right side, you can see it's glowing a little bit blue there. I can pull up my exhibit list and tap on an exhibit so that it only shows on that right side. In a similar fashion, I can tap the left side now and pull up a different document so that I can see two documents side by side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen and go and just bring up uh, a single document here. If you don't tap either of those sides, it'll just show up in the main screen area. Now here's where things really get fun. We're going to go through the tools at the top of the toolbar there. The first one is the magnifying glass with the little plus sign. That's probably the most important button you're going to be using. That's the call out button. So once it's selected, you can then go and use your finger to draw a rectangle around a section of the document that you want to call out. You can actually use your finger to move this call out up and down and around so that it can be out of the way. Now to close a call out, you simply just double tap with your finger and that call out goes away. Unfortunately, you can't have more than one call out at a time. 
The next button is the rotation tool. Pretty self-explanatory, just tap it and you can rotate left or right. The next tool is the highlight tool. You can tap and hold on the highlight button to get your choice of colors. Most of the time we stay with yellow, but you have some other colors there as well. You simply just tap to select which color that you want and then you can use your finger again to draw a highlight around a rectangle section. Now what's great is that you can do a highlight before you do a call out if you want to do it that way or you can do a call out first and then you can go and tap the highlight button and perform a highlight actually on the call out. Now the next button uh, looks like it's, it's an underline button and that's because it's really a straight pen tool. You can tap and hold on this as well to select a different color and a line thickness. Uh, I usually do a red. What it really does is draw a straight line. The next tool is the freehand draw tool. Again, if you tap and hold, you can select from different colors and a line thickness, but this basically just allows you to use your finger. Again, if I do a call out, for example, I can then tap the freehand draw tool to either draw an arrow or circle something as if I was writing on the document. Now, the next two buttons are pretty self-explanatory. It's undo and redo. Now the next button is the eraser button. Now, unfortunately, I don't know of a way that you can erase all of the annotations on the document. So what I would recommend is tap and hold, select the thickest eraser that you can, and then basically you're just using your finger to go through and erase some of the annotations that you've done in the past, including highlights or lines. The next button is a laser pointer tool. You can tap and hold on this to get different types of lasers. I wish you could change the color on this. Really all this is doing is that if this were a uh, on a projector, you could just basically call attention to something without either uh, circling it with a pen or just sort of use a laser pointer instead. The next button there is the print button. Again, fairly self-explanatory. And the button with the camera on it is really called the snapshot or the screenshot tool. I really like this tool because if you've got things marked up and you want to kind of save all of the annotations, you simply just tap on that camera and you don't even really see much that happens, but it actually creates a JPEG in the saved exhibits folder over here so that if you were to go and pull up a different document but you want to go back to that snapshot that you made you could simply just pull that up immediately this also saves a picture into your iPad's camera roll so that you can find it there as well now the button to the right of that is the projector button we'll come to that in just a moment but on the upper right corner up there is the clear screen button. We've already talked about that. That will completely clear everything off of the screen uh, in case there's like an objection that comes up. You just need to clear the screen for a few moments to talk about something else. Up to this point now, I've been showing you how iTrial works by using the mirror whole screen option down here at the bottom of this options menu. That way you've been able to see all of the individual buttons and the inner workings of iTrial. But when you give a presentation, your audience doesn't see this back end. They don't see all the buttons. They don't see the list of your documents. All they see is a black background with whatever document or file that you're projecting at the time. This works out great though, because you still have access to all of the buttons and the functions in iTrial right from the screen of your iPad. So you're in full control of what you want your audience to see. You're just directing the show from your iPad. The projector button in the upper right corner usually displays the word off, even when you first connect your iPad to a projector or TV. Now, once you are connected to a projector or a widescreen TV, you can then tap the button to on and your audience will see the file that you're displaying on a black background or a gray background. Your audience does not see your file listing or the annotations buttons, but you still have access to all of those same buttons so that you can do call outs and highlights and underlines and drawing on the document as you need to. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how you can use iTrial in Zoom, in a Zoom meeting or another meeting app. The first thing in Zoom is that you're going to go and click the share screen icon. And one of the options there is your iPhone or iPad. 
Now, there's one more step here. If this is the first time you're doing this, when you click the share button, it will tell you that you need to install a plugin in order to share your iPad screen. It's very quick. You just click install, puts it in, and then it gives you the instructions. Basically, you're gonna be using your screen mirroring capability on the iPad or your AirPlay capability. You simply just go into your control center, tap screen mirroring, and then you're gonna choose Zoom Brett or whatever your computer is being named. Now, this is on a Windows computer that I'm showing it to you. It works even easier on a Mac. But once you share that, you're basically now sharing your iPad screen inside a Zoom meeting. And if I go into iTrial, what it basically does is blanks out the screen for everybody until I bring up a document. And once I bring up that document, on my iPad, I still have access to all the list of other files and documents. I can do a call out. I can add a highlight to something. I can draw. Now again, I'm doing all of this inside a Zoom meeting. So all of the meeting participants are basically seeing exactly what they would see if they were in a room watching a projector or a TV. The iTrial app is $99 in the App Store. And I realize some people may think that's a little steep until you compare that price with the price of a full-fledged trial presentation software package that you would purchase for uh, a, a laptop, for example. Plus, not to mention all of the bells and whistles and the functions that you get to use from the iTrial app right from your iPad. Well worth the price. Please subscribe to the Apps and Law YouTube channel here. Don't forget to click that little bell so you can get notified when I post new videos. You can also subscribe to the Apps and Law blog at appsandlaw.com. Thanks for watching.